The USS Salem is berthed just south of Boston in Quincy, Massachusetts. The cruiser's aft 8-inch gun turret can be seen here, and here we are looking forward over the main batteries. We'll start our radio tour in Radio 2. TAJ straight ahead and a power supply for TCK on our left. Moving inside, we see a TCZ on the left and a TCK. The TCZ is an ART-13 configured for shipboard and onshore use. 100 watts output on CW, MCW and voice over a frequency range of 2 to 18 megahertz. The rather large box upon which the ART-13 is mounted contains power supply components and control circuitry. Two different power supplies were developed for this unit, one for AC and a second for DC primary power. This would appear to be the AC version with the 866 rectifier tube showing behind the screen vent on the front of the cabinet. We'll see several more TCZs in our tour of the ship. And another look at the TCK. This transmitter covered a frequency range of 2 to 18.1 megahertz, good for 400 watts output on CW and 100 watts on voice. Used a pair of 813s in the PA, grid modulated. Motor generator set here, probably paired with the TAJ we saw earlier. A pair of TCK power supplies. And another TCK. The brass cylinder on the top of the cabinet is the RF trunk which connected the transmitter to its associated antenna topside. More on these later. The large unit on the left is a TBA, of which we have a better view in this slide. The TBA operated over a frequency range of 4 to 26 megahertz, CW only, with an output power of 1000 watts. This may well be the only operating example still in existence. In warships of the World War II period, signals were typically routed between the radio areas and the antenna's topside by means of RF trunks, which are essentially large, rigid, coaxial lines. All impedance matching was done at the transmitter. Seen here are the RF switches used to disconnect and ground the individual antennas when not in use. In later slides, we will see how the antenna connections were made topside. Receiving position in Radio 2. Left to right, we see RBA, RBB, and RBC receivers mounted on a pair of Navy operating desks in a typical shipboard configuration. The RBA was a TRF design that covered 14.5 to 500 kilohertz. The superhead RBBs and RBCs covered 500 kilohertz to 4 megahertz and 4 to 27 megahertz respectively. The RBA can be recognized by a centrally located frequency readout and simple knob configuration as opposed to the distinctive front panel layout shared by the RBB and RBC. These were expensive, no compromise designs, widely used by the Navy through the 1940s and beyond. You will see many more of these sets in later slides. Moving on to Radio 3 on the cruiser, also known as Emergency Radio, we see another TCZ. This example includes a low frequency loading coil which can be seen mounted on the adjacent bulkhead. Details of the RF trunks described before can also be seen here. Radio 3 TBM transmitter with its associated modulator cabinet. This set operates over a frequency range of 2 to 18.1 megahertz with 500 watts out on CW, MCW and voice. Radio 3 receiving position. The RBS receiver on the right covered 2 to 20 MHz. Except for small transceivers intended primarily for voice communications, all transmitters, receivers, and Navy standard remote control units were wired to transfer panels, which allowed any control unit to operate any transmitter and any receiver output to be connected to any operating position. These interconnects were done via patch cords in early installations and later on by switch panels of the type seen here.
We've now moved further down inside the ship to Radio 1, which was the primary center for incoming message traffic. Many, many receivers here, mostly of the type seen and described before. and a huge transmitter transfer panel. The edge of the associated receiver panel can be seen on the right hand side of the picture. This is Radio 4 which was configured for ship to shore communications. Here we see a TCS transmitter receiver pair and associated power supply and one each SCR 508 and SCR 608. And in the same area, a pair of TCZs on the right, and another TCS on the left. And moving through the hatch in front of us, we find ourselves in the ECM compartment, looking at an SLR radar intercept and direction finding system, and a TDY radar jamming transmitter. In yet another compartment, we see the high-powered audio amplifiers that run the ship's PA and intercom system. And a radar scope in the CIC. Moving up on deck, we see the termination points of a pair of RF trunks in the lower right-hand side of the picture. Leads from these can be seen running up to strain insulators and continuing upwards where they will finally terminate at the bases of two of a multitude of vertical antennas mounted on the ship's superstructure. Here we see the termination points of three more trunks with lines running from two of these over to vertical antennas mounted on the structure to the right. This can be seen more clearly in this slide. Radiation, of course, takes place beginning at the trunk termination point and continues all the way up to the tip of the vertical element. Yet another antenna and feed line. And looking back from the bow of the ship, a forest of vertical antennas can be seen surrounding the superstructure. This concludes our tour of the Salem, and we'll now move up to Boston and the destroyer USS Cassin Young. This is the entrance to main radio on the destroyer. Much tighter quarters here than on the cruiser. Inside we see the familiar RBA and RBB combination, along with an RBS and an LM frequency meter. On the left we see a pair of 1950s receivers, the medium frequency SRR-12 and the HF SRR-13. This is an SRT-15 transmitter a contemporary of the SRR receiver seen in the last slide. This set operates over a range of 300 kilohertz to 26 megahertz covered in 10 hertz synthesized steps. 500 watts output on voice, CW, and RTTY. And here we see W1NZR in QSO on 40 meters with the SRT-15. And we end our tour of the destroyer in emergency radio, located in a different part of the ship. Our AK and RAL receivers here with a TBL transmitter located out of sight on the right. <laughs>